Hi and welcome in the next episode of After Effects FX A to Z. My name is Maltanen and in this episode I'll show you how the audio waveform works. So let's just create a new solid, make it comp size and go down to generate audio waveform. You're probably curious why we're talking about audio waveform while there is audio spectrum above in the list. Well, the reason is simple because audio waveform is actually a little bit simpler and both of those effects do very similar things. So I thought that maybe covering audio waveform first would actually make more sense. So audio waveform applied to the layer. Yes, we can now make some room here. Okay. Well, we obviously need some audio to work with. So let me just import something into our project and drop it into the comp. So the first parameter we have is obviously the audio layer. So we're just gonna pick the audio layer and this is how the effect looks in default. It renders the waveform of your sound file. Seems pretty simple and straightforward and of course it is, but there are so many parameters that you can achieve really interesting results with it. Personally, I've used it at least in a dozen of projects. And one of them is this Kurama from my Making It Look Great 5 training DVD that you can get on Motionworks, obviously. I, of course, encourage you to check out the whole training, but if you would like to just see how the this Kurama was built, then you can just go ahead and look only into this tutorial. But I digress. So here's audio waveform. And we've got a bunch of parameters. Of course, we've got start point, which basically explains itself, start point and end point. Pretty simple and self-explanatory is also the path options. So let's just add a random path to our layer. It can be a closed path or open path, doesn't really matter. And you can just choose it right like that. And as you can see, the waveform now travels along this path. Pretty cool. Uh, but let's get rid of that. And maybe reset it. And get rid of our mask so it doesn't get in the way. What else? We've got display samples, maximum height, and those uh, four first parameters. Audio duration, audio offset. You can think of them like resolution and zoom parameter. If you're gonna open up the waveform properties in here on your layer, those parameters actually zoom you into this specific area in time. They really do. If we take audio duration and increase it, we're gonna see that it starts to look more and more like the whole waveform display that we have on the bottom in here but not quite right and this is where display samples come in because this is the parameter that's kind of like the resolution of your uh, image so if we're gonna pump that up we're gonna see that the resolution gets higher so we are displaying more samples and therefore it looks more and more like the actual waveform so uh, that's it in a nutshell we've got of course like audio offset uh, because right now, when the offset is set to zero, the current sound you would hear in your speakers is exactly in the middle of your layer, or in other words, in the middle of those two points. So let's reset it again, so it looks more like the default settings, okay. I found that those default settings usually work okay. You can see what's happening, you can see this render react to the actual audio file that you're hearing in the background so that's really nice uh, of course we've got visual settings like thickness uh, softness there are pretty self-explanatory so we don't need to focus on them very much random seed we'll get to that in a second inside color outside color those of course depend on the thickness so if i'll take the inside color white outside color like that, obvious stuff. So, no need to spend time talking about them. But there is waveform option, which is uh, 
pretty interesting if you're working with a very well defined stereo audio file. So you've got really distinct left and right channels. This is this can create really cool effects if you're gonna have like two copies of audio waveform on two layers and have one display the left channel and the other one display the right. You can create really nice results with that. Also, we've got display option and this basically changes the way the waveform is being represented and my personal favorite is digital which just makes those vertical bars. Uh, I just love it. It's great. Dots are not so bad as well, but I'd rather like the uh, digital display option. And of course, there's composite on original. So uh, let's go back to the random seed. As you can see, it doesn't change much when we're in digital mode, but it does when we're in analog lines. And this is for randomizing and kind of simulating a higher resolution or displayed samples. Take a look at this. If we're going to decrease the samples, maybe something like that, it can increase the random seed and it kind of tries to smooth it out in some areas. And the truth is that it shouldn't be smoothed out. So if you don't like the look of the lines, it's too blocky for you. So you can easily change that using random seed and just find something that works. So, okay, that's audio waveform in a nutshell. Next one on the list is audio spectrum. Hope you guys liked this short introduction tutorial. Stay tuned for more and make sure to check out my training on Motionworks and of course my own website with free video tutorials for After Effects. Until next time, happy After Effecting.